Welcome to Exhibition. And hello, Rachel Carroll. Hello, Richard. Great to see you there. Um, and the exhibition that we're talking about today is My Studio, My Home at Rochford Gallery in Sydney. Um, and this is a slightly unusual situation in terms of this interview because the works are the works of your late father, Patrick Carroll. Um, and you are speaking on his behalf to share some of the aspects of this survey exhibition with us today. So thank you very much uh, for that. Let's start in the most general of terms and find out something about your father's broad approach to painting because it was so much part of his life, but also your family's life. Definitely life and art were constantly intertwined in our house and our family. Um, every holiday, uh, especially when we were younger, was dedicated to his painting trips. I mean, we enjoyed them as well, but it was everywhere we went was a new subject and a new possibility for a subject. Uh, the Hawkesbury being uh, a key location, as well as the Blue Mountains, Megalong Valley, and, uh, and further west. We all often went to visit his family in Bathurst. Yeah, and Safala, of course, and Hill End. I learned about that at a young age and how important that was to the artistic community. What do you think he was drawn to in the natural, the wild environment? Well, being born in Bathurst, I think he was naturally a boy from the bush and it was very hard to, for him to that, for that to be removed from his soul. But he was always on the search for that next, you know, dramatic landscape, whether it was, you know, a stormy sky or a beautiful ragged rock face. He, uh, he was very much attracted to escarpments along the Blue Mountains. And yes, he was a romantic at heart, um, but yeah, keen to find that drama, that, that tricky subject that needed conquering. I know he described himself as a, a contemporary realist. Um, where that, that realistic detail that he achieved in his painting was in many ways implied through the application of abstract marks and working of the surface. Um, but, but what did you make of his uh, approach to painting in terms of the, the methodologies that he used? Yes, he was always an experimentalist. He was looking, always looking for new ways to come at a subject and to activate a surface before he'd begin. And he was very much about layers and texture, especially more so as he matured as an artist. Um, affectionately during the eighties, he was called Mr. Kling for his love of using cling wrap to spread paint across the surface before he started. Then something like this, I brought this along as well, you know, kitchen tools. These would make amazing marks on the surface, especially if rocks were involved. Um, but yeah, I found it exciting. Um, he never stopped experimenting and trying to find a new mark and a, and a new way of starting a work. It was uh, invigorating. And as he always said, every painting is an abstraction. It's just how far you take it into realism. And I always found that, um, you know, an artist myself, I found that exciting. It, it made possibilities expand on the surface of the canvas as you began. Well, the work behind you uh, is an example of his constant desire to experiment, you know, right up to the very last uh, parts of his life. Tell us about that work behind you. Yes, this is called Supernova. And um, it was a new technique he was experimenting with, you know, 12 to 18 months um, before he passed. And he, uh, he was pouring acrylic onto the surface and then mixing other mediums in with it. Uh, but he's, he was keen to get back to it, um, abstraction at some level in his work. And, uh, and this was the beginning of that new series. And yeah, this was a finalist in the Gosford Art Prize. So they appreciated his, uh, his new experiments as well, I think. As we look at this survey exhibition at Rochford Gallery, we can see over the years there have been a considerable variety of styles that, uh, that your father utilised. Would you be aware of particular influences or particular artists whom he admired? Yes, definitely. I mean, um, even all through our childhood, we were surrounded by the books of inspiration that he kept on his shelf in the studio. Fred Williams, um, Arthur Boyd, 
uh, Reese, uh, Brett Whiteley, um, all of these were definitely at his fingertips whenever he was uh, in the mood to sit down and reflect. And the exhibition title uh, is My Studio, My Home, but that is also the title of uh, one of the works in the exhibition. How much for your father was home life, literally the, the home environment integrated into the painting process? Oh, very much so. I mean, early on in um, his career, the studio was in the house. And then as we hit high school, he bought the house next door and turned that into his studio. So he was always there. You know, I never felt like it was a father who disappeared and we didn't see it for months on end. He, uh, we'd come home from school and go into the studio. He was there. We'd start painting before we did homework. And, uh, you know, he, he, he tried to normalise his profession as much as possible. So he was surrounded by books, his music, um, sculpture. He loved Elvis. So I think there was a bit of a, a token there to Elvis. And, um, and yes, it was, it was a com complete, uh, you know, mm -hmm. focus on everything that was a part of his life that came into that painting. One of the, the largest works in the exhibition is an extraordinary Angophora, one particular tree. Did he develop relationships with very particular locations or trees? Well, yes. I mean, again, the Angophora has never been seen before. It's one of the last paintings he was working on for a very long time there, over 12 months. And as we saw, yes, a very large painting, two and a half metres. But he, again, Angophoras were a new subject for him. And uh, before he passed, he said he was very keen to do an entire exhibition on the one tree. He'd fallen in love with them. He'd found a new forest up the central coast where they were, uh, uh, you know, in vast numbers. And, uh, and this was one of many. So sadly, we've only got the one. <laughs> he seemed to enjoy different and sometimes unusual perspectives on uh, particular environments, whether they were um, human-based environments or uh, because I know at one stage, I think in uh, the 1980s, he, he actually went for a trip over Sydney, floated over Sydney in an airship um, mm -hmm. and, and did quite a number of works from that. Uh, but also we have a, a very large aerial perspective of the Flinders Ranges. What do you think drew him to that, that aerial perspective of different landscapes? Yeah, again, I think it was um, t seeking that variety um, in and to have no constraints. You know, it was taking away, taking him away from that conventional view of the landscape. And uh, so he really liked that idea of finding the next challenge. And uh, and I guess too, it wasn't something that was happening a lot in you know other circles. But yeah, every time we went somewhere, if there was an opportunity to get in a helicopter or a small plane. He, he relished that opportunity to see the bird's eye view of, of the land. How would you describe his approach to plan air painting versus studio painting? And, and, and how did he combine the two? Um, I think both were equally as brave. You know, some you think sometimes people step outside and they take smaller versions of everything. He still tried to work on a big scale outside and, uh, well, when I say tried, he did. And uh, he would take the cling with him. He would take the tools with him. So he would just fill the car with what he needed for that moment and that landscape. Um, and so it was a mini version of, of his studio it was moved outside. And, uh, but then going back to the studio, I guess there was room to develop. And that was his love in art as well to always take things to another level. Uh, for him, he wasn't very keen on the notion of a la prima. It was very much, there's more to come. There's more layers, you know, and we're like, no, stop, stop. That looks good. And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so for the frustration of his fellow artists and, you know, sometimes family as well, he, he wanted to keep going with the layers. And that was what happened in the studio. What would you say his relationship to the, the paint and the application and use of paint was? Oh, very energised and very passionate and brave. There was no, um, you know, it was about getting that big heart. He often called it the big hard hit to begin with, you know, to get that sweeping gesture of paint. 
um, cover the surface, get rid of the white canvas and, uh, and really activate the surface because he wanted that raw abstract beginning but he also wanted the energy of the location that he was you know engaged with to come through at a, at a passionate and expressive level. So there was quite a dramatic sense of the of the use of paint itself but he also seemed very motivated by a sense of drama in the environment you know stormy skies mysterious mist what do you think drew him to that? He enjoyed the drama of nature and and uh, and what you know the changes that nature provided for, as a subject. I think, um, and then if the drama wasn't there, he'd find a way of putting it in. <laughs> You'll find in a in a few paintings um, there'd be just a hint of smoke, and you're not sure where it's coming from. Whether it's there's a, a distant you know uh, back burning event or it's a house with a little chimney he you know that was him interrupting the skyline or interrupting those cliffs it was yeah he always found to bring that a way to bring that drama in the work uh, my studio my home has has actually been described as almost the ultimate self portrait by him of his environment uh, yet in this exhibition there is uh, a very late self portrait which he did an actual self portrait how do you relate to that image? Again, I think I see the dramatic viewpoint. It's that, you know, looking up at someone, he's obviously in a reclining position. He often spent, you know, the end of the day lying on a lounge and sometimes taking the odd selfie or manipulating subjects on his phone. He, he became very interested in technology. So for me, this portrait is about those moments of um, manipulating uh, photos to get another subject and to find new colours and new shapes. And for me, that's what that still, uh, that portrait, sorry, is about. It's, yeah, you can see how he's deliberately broken it down into shapes. Um, and in some ways it's still quite raw and um, possibly incomplete. But uh, yeah, it's, it's got his drama in there. I mean, I, for me, my sister says it's, it's amazing. For me, there's a little bit of darkness in it. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's moody and it's reflective. Yeah, it's, it's definitely makes you feel like he's there watching you. <laughs> well, in so many ways, uh, this whole exhibition is as though he is there because it is such a survey of work over such a long period of time. How important is this survey of his work for your family? Oh, very important, I think, because under the circumstances, we struggled to get a lot of the work um, back from his studio. It was very hard to access. And uh, yeah, we wanted to take that time to to celebrate his life and, and what he had achieved, I think. And, and so many of the pieces, because they've never been seen, I think we, for us as a family, it was important to have them on a gallery wall and for let people to see what he was just about to launch and what he was thinking of doing next. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a wonderful big celebration of his life and how much he achieved and, and how he, you know, was a full-time painter. I, you know, there's not too many of them these days in the nicest possible way. Everyone's got a part-time job somewhere else. Um, uh, but he, he lived the dream. He, it was his mission to become that full-time artist. And in 1974, he quit a full-time job to do that. And he spent his entire life doing it. So we're pretty impressed with that as a career choice. And uh and the success he made along the way. Well, it is a, a great celebration of his life. So Rachel Carroll, thank you very much for sharing his exhibition with us. Oh, thank you for letting me have the time to do so. Thank you, Richard. <laughs>